Well, Vince, today we're back at uh, Pilot Mountain, and, and I see you have for us three timbers here. What are we going to be doing today? Well, we're going to pick up where we left off last time, Carney. The last time we went over the uh, timbers as an A-frame. Today I thought we might go over how to use the timbers as a tripod. Okay, well, why is it so important to understand how to use timbers as a tripod? With all the technology, all the things we have today, why do we need to, to know how to take wood and make one? Well, depending on the, the circumstances, you may or may not need to, to use timbers, but in those unusual circumstances where you're in a remote area and you have to hike in in a wilderness environment or whatever, uh, it could be an advantageous thing rather than having to tote all that equipment in. Or during times of natural disaster when there are a lot of resources deployed over a large area, rather than have to wait for those resources to be brought in, we can take advantage of trees or other uh, other materials that we have at our disposal. As long as the size is anywhere from four, five, six inches would be a good size, is that right? Exactly, depending on the load, you know, if you're trying to do structural collapse type stuff and lifting something of that nature, you'd probably be working with an A-frame, but of course you'd want to go up in size. Uh, but working with a one or two person load, uh, like we'd typically be doing in a confined space or a rope rescue scenario, then about, about five inches in diameter is, is gonna be sufficient. Okay, well let's get started. What do we need to do first? Well, to start off with, we're going to assemble our, uh, our timbers, and today we've just got three commercially bought uh, 404 posts. Uh, one of the key points is to make sure that they're even at the butt. Uh, the tops don't necessarily have to be the exact same length, but when we stand this thing up, all the feet are going to sit on the ground, so we want to make sure we start off with all three even on the butt end. Uh, after we do that, we're going to take a piece of rope and we're just going to tie a draw hitch around the base. And this is just to hold the timbers in place while we're, uh, while we're doing the lashing at the top. So nothing real special there, just a, a tight, tight knot to keep it together as we're working. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because this is going to come off just as soon as we finish doing the lashing. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to move up to the top. And we're going to come down around 30 inches, and of course that would be from the shortest timber. If one timber stopped here and the others went up four or five feet, we've got to work with that shortest timber. 30 inches from whatever our shortest timber is. Exactly. Yep. And we're going to come back and we're going to set our lashing up, and it's going to be a figure eight lashing. And we're going to start our lashing with a clove hitch and work our way up. One thing that can be a benefit prior to getting started is to take a couple of sticks or a couple of pieces of two by fours and uh, in placing in here as spacers. This allows sufficient space for us to actually work the lashing through. Uh, one more thing that you can do if you're working with squared off timbers like this, you can take something like a, a piece of wood or a piece of metal or something and you can camfer the edges down. You can beat it down to round it off. This does two things. Uh, it, it creates uh, a little more surface area which gives that rope a little bit tighter bite and grip uh, and it also prevents us from breaking off little splinters uh, where it's so sharp and uh, getting those, the rope or exactly like getting that, that damage okay. into the rope. All right. Now, I see we tied a, a draw hitch at the end there. Would we want to tie one at this end too to hold these two befores together or is that important? Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. Uh, it's not absolutely a necessity, but I believe it's going to be advantageous to us because we don't want these pieces here to fall out or the ends to spread while we're working with it. So again, we're going to just take and tie another draw hitch below these two. The reason we're going to tie it below these two is we're going to be doing the lash and, and there's going to be a lot of movement up across the top. Okay. Well, as far as uh, starting our lashing of, of the three posts together, um, what, what length rope is ideal to, to use for this? Is it okay to use a long one? Should we look for a particular one? What would be your recommendation? Well, the ideal situation would be something in approximately 50 foot of half inch rope. Uh, of course, depending on the circumstances and materials available, that may or may not be right. uh, available. But if we have it, that would be my first choice. Anything shorter, and you're gonna risk running out of rope and not making sufficient number of lashings. Okay. Uh, anything longer, you got a little bit of excess, but you can take some tape or you can uh, take and tie that rope and get it out of your way if it's absolutely necessary. Okay. So we're gonna start this off with a clove hitch around our outer pole. I'm just going to cheat there a little bit. We could tie it directly around. And from this point, with, with uh, our tail left over, what do we do with that? The tail, uh, typically we'll talk about tying off with a safety, but rather than tying off with a safety, we're going to do something that's called marrying. 
uh, when people get married, two people join. We're going to take these two ropes and we're going to join them together, making several twists. And what will happen when we start making the lashing, the compression will actually hold these two together. Okay. And all we're going to do, just like the name suggests, is we're going to lash in a figure eight. We're coming over the first, under the middle, and then we're going to come over this outer. And again, we're down approximately 30 inches. And you want to make sure that you get this nice and snug. You don't want a lot of slack in here. And then we're going to come under the outer and over the middle. And he, again, he'll pull the slack out. And if you'll notice, we're <coughs> running these lashings from the bottom towards the top. Once we've completed the, uh, the six figure eight lashings, now we're gonna finish off with the two fraps. And we're gonna do the two fraps first on the side we started on with the original clove hitch. And this is what's gonna lock the system together. <clears throat> and you really can't pull this too tight. You want this to be very tight. So we're gonna put a lot of tension on this system right here. Carney's going to sit on it, and I'm going to cinch the system down, and he's going to sort of put a little pressure on that. And now once the two fraps are done on his side, we're going to pull it through, and we're going to make two more fraps on this side. And so as we cross here, we're just going straight in line and, and back in for the second frap. Exactly. That just makes it nice and neat so that it's easy to look at it and make sure everything's, everything's in place. Okay. And then once we've done that, we're going to finish tying off with a clove hitch, just like we started with a clove hitch. So you start a clove on one side and you should finish on the opposite side. That's correct. Okay, what we're going to do now is the rest of this tail that's going to be in the way. We can take this and wrap it together. You could use something like electrical tape and tape it to one leg, uh, bundle it up. If you had a tremendous amount, like a 150 foot coil, I would just take him, make a couple of half inches around his leg and then put the rest of it in the bag right there at the foot. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take this draw hitch off and get it out of our way. What we have here is a two inch piece of webbing that, that has already been put together and we want to put this on the tripod in a way that it pulls the tripod together, not trying to, to pull any, any particular leg out. One way of doing that is to, to simply loop over the middle and then as we reach around, we pull it back together and put a carabiner in here and now it's going to pull everything together close and tight uh, when the pressure is actually loaded on there. And I'm going to go ahead and hang the pulley on there just in case. I believe we'll be able to reach it at that point. Okay. But uh, just to be safe, we'll have it all in, in position. Okay, Vince, we now we've got our tripod uh, in the standing upright position. How do we know how far to move our legs apart or, or how things need to be stretched? Well, ideally we want the load to be distributed equally amongst the three timbers so that we don't overstress one timber. Uh, typically speaking, we like to have the distance between the legs about half the distance of the working height, which is the height of the pulley to the ground. So if we're to looking at about nine feet right now, uh, we'd want the legs to be about four and a half, uh, four, four and a half, five feet apart. And we'll just use a rope to tie a rope ledger around the bottom. Is that the best thing? Exactly. Uh, to sec help secure the legs, uh, we're gonna, today we're going to use a rope ledger. Uh, but first of all, before we do that, I think we need to go over. We did discuss hanging the harness uh, well, for our pulley. If, if you're not the perfect height like I am and, and you can't reach that, what do you need to do to be able to get it? Well, something that's real simple and easy to do would be if, if, if you were to just grab that one leg right there, Carney, and pick it up and walk out, what will happen is you'll see that the system drops down and it makes the pulley much easier to get to. You could go back just a little bit more. And once I pull this down to a good working height, I'm just going to take and tie a little overhand in it so it doesn't 
work its way back through the pulley. And then you can walk the pos back into position. Now we've got our good equilateral triangle about four to five feet between each of the legs. Uh, it gets it at a real good angle so that most of the force is downward, helping to plant the legs into the ground. Now we need to make sure we do something to keep the legs from kicking out. We've got a couple of options here. One is you can take and dig a hole about six to 12 inches in depth and put each one of the feet in it. Uh, sometimes that can be a, a difficult adventure, especially if you're talking about it in an urban setting, a structural collapse, uh, a building or something like that. You may not be or able to do a, that. A rock face or something. Or even right here on Pilot Mountain out on the rock. Another option is to drive pickets. You can drive a picket in beside each of the three legs and then just make a lashing around each of the legs. But something that's even easier than that and doesn't require any special equipment, we're just going to make a rope ledger and we're going to start off by tying a clove hitch on the first leg. Tie overhand as a safety in our cloves. And we want to work this down as low as possible so it doesn't create a tripping hazard or create a problem for us people working in and outside of the, uh, the tripod itself. Once we come from that one, I'm going to come to the second leg and we're going to do the same thing. You can either tie the clove hitch around the leg or you can do an open clove hitch and somebody can pick the leg up and he can slide it over it. Okay. And there's my clove hitch. Typically right here what we would do is we'd tie this off with a safety. One thing we may have to do as far as our hauling system so we don't topple the system over is make a change of direction pulley at the bottom. If you have enough tail in the rope, we can take advantage of that instead of having to use another piece of equipment. So I'm gonna continue and make two wraps. And these two wraps need to be fairly snug. Then we're gonna make two loose wraps. I'm gonna put my hand in here, let Carney do the wraps. Okay, once we get those two loops right there, we're going to twist those. And what this is going to do, actually you can hold those straight, I'll just make the twist right here. Okay. We're going to take this piece and we're going to twist it over the top and we're going to lock it with a half hitch. And we're going to put a second one on there just to be safe. And what this has done is it's allowed us an attachment point that's not going to travel up the leg so that when we pull to haul our load up vertically, we're not putting a toppling force. It's kind of being sheared the, down the leg and we've got a nice, nice change of direction there. Exactly. Okay. And then we'll make it into a clove hitch. And then I'm gonna just take and put a small overhand. Well, Vince, this is really a very simple system that, that could be used. Uh, could be made out of anything that, that could be found. Um, you know, what is the strength of, of uh, looking just at four by fours? What kind of strength are, are we looking at with the system? I mean, is it a one, say for one person, a two person? How, how far do you think we can go with the lifting on, on this? Well, according to the fog manuals and, and other resources, they, they would typically recommend this be used for something in the neighborhood of a two-person load. I would feel very comfortable lifting a two-person load, which can be approximately 600 pounds with this type of system. Okay. Well, thank you very much.